We're testing 50 of the greatest myths, but it's on two different versions of Minecraft, Java and Bedrock. The Ender Dragon is harder to beat in Java than it is in Bedrock. This is false. The Ender Dragon fight in Bedrock Edition is considered to be more challenging due to its increased attack damage and the addition of Ender Acid, which can deal significant damage to players. This is how long it took for me to beat it in Bedrock, and this is how long it took for me to beat it in Java. Now that right there is a bunch of I've ever seen one. You can brew the same potions in both versions. Up, uh, uh, this is not true. In fact, in Bedrock, there's a secret potion, the Potion of Decay, which inflicts the wither effect on anything you splash it on. Java players don't even have access to this potion. Boats are the same in both versions. This is the recipe on Java. This is the recipe on Bedrock. Do they look the same? One of them has a shovel. <laughs> which just makes it more annoying to craft, if I'm being honest. Colored sheep are the same in both versions. If you shear a colored sheep in Java, the sheep would just look like a regular white sheep. However, if you shear a colored sheep in Bedrock, the little scraps of wool remaining would be the same color as the sheep. Isn't this sick? Banners are useless in game. In Bedrock, banners are useless. However, in Java, there's many uses marking locations on the map or even being used to decorate your shield. Baby mobs grow at the same rate in both versions. In both versions, it takes an average of 20 minutes or one Minecraft day for a baby mob to grow up. However, on Bedrock, you can feed your baby breeding items and it will speed the process up by 10%. Zombie sieges occur in both versions. These events are where large hordes of zombies spawn in villagers, only occurring in Java Edition. Bedrock players do not have to worry about this particular event, so consider yourself lucky. Bedrock and Java share the same chest block. Fact, Java Edition has a unique <laughs> Christmas chest texture that appears during the holidays, while Bedrock apparently hates Christmas and doesn't do any fun festive changes. Both editions have the same mob spawning mechanics. In Bedrock, mobs can spawn on leaves, while in Java Edition, they cannot. This difference can impact the way players approach mob-proofing their treehouses and other leaf-based structures. Quite significantly, as you can see, mob render distance is different in both games. In Java, players are able to see mobs from much further away, while Bedrock is much shorter, making it harder to spot them. This means if you're wanting to do a hardcore Let's Play, you should probably do it in Java because you're not going to be able to see the mobs that are approaching you. Do both versions have the same visibility? Java Edition actually has reduced underwater visibility compared to Bedrock. This means in Java, water can hide many more secrets and be much more dangerous since it's so much harder to see. It's like the community pool. <laughs> fishing is the same in both versions. In Bedrock, players can obtain enchanted books and other valuable items from fishing more easily than in Java. Due to the loot being less rare in Bedrock Edition, if I was playing Bedrock, I would literally become a fisherman full-time. Bedrock is bigger than Java. Size doesn't matter, because the fact is, Java Edition has a world border at 30 million blocks. Meanwhile, Bedrock's border is 12,550,824 blocks. This means that Java has so many more blocks, which means there are way more diamonds and loot to be found. I can't even make it to the edge of this Bedrock world without falling through the map. You can dye water in Minecraft. In Bedrock, as long as you put the water source in a cauldron, you can actually dye it. And when the water is dyed, you can even use it to color your leather armor pieces just by placing them inside of it. A much more realistic way to dye armor compared to Java. I don't know why they don't change this. You know, who doesn't like making a cauldron full of Kool-Aid? Endermen drop the blocks they're holding in both versions. In Java, Endermen holding blocks will drop them when killed, while in the Bedrock Edition, Endermen do not drop blocks they're holding upon death. Hey you. Yeah, you there. Did you drop this Firebird t-shirt from Firebird.com where you can get the free iOS and Android app? You can get this t-shirt and these squishies and even this plushie and so much more? Stop. <laughs> You're making me sound like I'm plugging my own merchandise for money. <laughs> You can link minecarts together. In fact, in Bedrock, guess what item you can use to link minecarts together? Come on. In the comments, guess what it is. If you guessed a lead, you'd be correct because you can actually create a train of connected minecarts and this isn't available in Java. Armor stands are the same in both versions. In Bedrock, they're actually so much better. If you get a name tag and were to name an armor stand, I don't know, a dinner bone, it would turn upside down. However, in Java, this is not the case, proving that armor stands are way outdated in Java. Snowballs kill blazes faster in Java than in Bedrock. Although snowballs do damage to blazes, unlike other mobs, neither version is faster than the other, with each version taking about seven snowballs to kill. Uh. 
Illagers are OP in Java. Illagers are able to open up doors in Java and attack villagers seeking refuge inside of their homes. However, in Bedrock, they just get stuck behind them. Open sesame! Well, I've done all I can do. Steve has hidden abilities in Minecraft. In Java, Steve is no different to any other skin in Minecraft, but in the Bedrock Edition, Steve has a hidden ability because he's a Chad. Actually, it's kind of creepy, but if you look long enough in third person, the Steve skin will actually blink at you. Our stronghold's the same in both versions. In Java, there's a set amount of strongholds that are generated in every world. However, in Bedrock, the amount and location of strongholds is completely random, meaning you can get some very unique spawn locations. You know, if you're into that. Are arrows the same in both versions? In Java, when you are shot by an arrow, you can see it visually sticking out of your body. However, in Bedrock, this is not the case. The arrow just disappears. Who knows where it went? Maybe to the Shadow Realm alongside all of the mobs no sent there. There's more mobs in Bedrock. Baby squids and dolphins exist on Bedrock, but they don't in Java. However, since the mobs aren't breedable in either version, you have to naturally find them spawned in, and it's almost as difficult as finding a baby in real life. That doesn't make sense. Parrots can dance on your shoulder in Minecraft. In Java Edition, it is not possible. However, in Bedrock, they can dance even when you pick them up. Dispensers are OP in Java. Dispensers are so much more accurate in Java, as you can see, compared to Bedrock. And when you're looking at it like this, it just makes it so much more noticeable. Size might not matter, but accuracy does. That's what she said. <laughs> the Far Lands exist in both versions. For those who don't know, the Far Lands is a famous terrain generation bug in early versions of Java Edition, and we have explored plenty of it in my videos. However, they don't exist in Bedrock since the bug that caused them was fixed long before Bedrock was even released. It's kind of unfortunate since there are many spooky things within them. You can light candles and campfires with nothing in your inventory. Can you guess which version you can do this on? That's right. Bedrock wins again. So the only issue with this is that you need to be on fire. Just walking over the candles and campfires will set them ablaze. Most people think it's impossible to jump more than four blocks in Minecraft. But if you jump 17 times with pixel perfect momentum and rotation, you can make a five block jump in Minecraft. But have you wondered if... Digging straight down is dangerous? I don't see how this is dangerous. That was a little dangerous. But still, we're fine. I mean, what are the chances of us actually falling into lava? I would say very minuscule. Okay, foxes can use a totem of undying to survive. Because foxes are the only animal in Minecraft that like pick things up in their mouth, uh, they're supposed to be able to survive. I don't think it's gonna work. Well, dead gum! Cauldrons save you from fall damage. Oh, oh, oh! What? You can mine Lapis Lazul with a stone pickaxe. I actually have no idea if this- <laughs> Confirmed! <laughs> Diamonds and turtle eggs have the exact same textures, just different colors. They're literally the same texture. Oh my god, I've been playing Minecraft for 10 years and my whole life is a lie. That myth was excellent. You can't eat food underwater. I'm gonna say this one is a bust. That's a bust. Using a Minecraft border, you can stack slabs on top of each other. If this actually works, my mind is going to be blown. So this slab is one block outside of the world border and it should work. No way. Oh my, seeing two different slabs stacked on top of each other is insane. Using your Minecraft username for seed generation gives you an OP spawn. As you can see, there's no cheats, none of that stuff. Making the world. Uh, okay. <laughs> This is definitely not overpowered. <laughs> but that goes into our next myth. If you dig straight down from where you spawn, you will find diamonds. I've actually heard about this myth, but never tested it. It's gonna take a long time because I don't have any tools. Or do I? I say there's a 0% chance of this working. Oh, we found coal, not diamonds though. That's busted. We dug straight down to bedrock. If you put 23 cows in a hole, they give you enough kinetic energy to fly with elytra. To test this, we have to dig a two block hole, spawn 23 cows inside of it. Four, five, six. And then we jump inside. Let's see ya, baby. What? No, I'm, I'm done. Those cows just launched me hundreds of blocks away. That is a confirmation. You've got to subscribe for that one. Can llama spit 10 blocks? We're about to see. Oh! Can they spit 11? Llama's got range, what about- Okay, we're gonna go for 12. Oh my- Okay, 13? Surely llamas can't spit 13 block. What? Okay. 
Okay, what about 15 blocks? I'm done. When standing still, skeletons never miss. Oh, after about 10 shots, he shot an arrow that went right over my head. Can you cure a zombie villager with a golden apple? No, no, I, he's my test subject. Please, sir, what have you done? What, if, okay, now, okay. Here you go, take, take this. That's a big fat myth, all he wants is my flesh. <laughs> you only need 15 bookshelves to get maximum enchants. Have I been doing it wrong my entire life? We're about to find out. That's confirmed. Does your Minecraft character ever blink? Whoa, oh, that was creepy. Witches are immune to lava and fire. So she's able to somehow swim in the lava. She's like half immune, half not immune. So she's not immune, but she does give herself fire resistance. She bites back. Dying in the end with a totem takes you to a custom dimension. Negative. Endermen can't see you through glass. None of these endermen. I can't believe this works. Are they? I think they're glass blind. I don't know. Do they got glaucoma? They got ligma. Cats in Minecraft don't take fall damage. Sorry. What? I did not think this was gonna work. Are you kidding me? What is that? Why? Well, maybe it works for me. Yeah. Apparently you can survive fall damage with a watermelon because it has water in it. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> if you're extremely lucky, eating a golden apple will give you three effects. That's only two. Two. I really want this myth to work. I'm eating every single golden apple. Now, you know what? After eating 32 golden apples, this myth is busted. Evokers will turn a blue sheep into a red one. Wh why? That is so weird. Look at this. Why it only turned one of them into a red sheep. What is the point of that? The point is, it's confirmed. You can cross a one block gap with a roof without jumping. Okay, we're just supposed to sprint through it. <gasps> it works, but not all the time. That's so weird. Point is, don't rely on this to get you safely across. You can sprint in a Minecraft boat. That is confirmed. And it looks like we're going way faster. Sugar cane grows faster on dirt than it does on sand. And now we wait. Ah, busted. It grows faster on sand. You can survive four anvils drop on your head. I am definitely going to get brain damage. Oh, oh my gosh, you, I, you can, but you can't, you can't get out afterwards. This one is weird, but you all wanted to see it. You never spawn on stone when making a new world. Big cap on this one. Oh, right, let's try, let's try again, shall we? Negative. Uh, grass again, wow. I want you to try this one for yourselves. We haven't spawned on stone once, unless, nope. Throwing diamond gear into lava turns it into netherite gear. <laughs> You would have to be an absolute idiot to fall for this one. This one is interesting. If you kill a piglin in one shot, it will not aggravate the other piglins around. What? Oh my gosh, we have been doing the nether the wrong way the entire time, ladies and gentlemen. You can light netherrack underwater. That, no. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. I was like, there's no chance. That's a bust, dude. Withers will not spawn in snow biomes. I think it's gonna work. <gasps> What? It didn't spawn. But if you break the snow around the soul sand, will it spawn? It will. Oh God, okay, I'm, I'm running to the next myth. <laughs> Using an anvil, you can combine two different types of armor. Oh God, I, I'm gonna call cap on this one before we, yeah, there, yeah, again. What did I tell you? Doesn't work, busted. White tulips don't give you white dye. That one will be interesting. It, what? Really, it, it gives you light gray dye, not white. Using the Minecraft border, you can put two stairs inside of each other. Oh my gosh. Wearing a helmet protects you from anvil damage. Oh, great, more, more brain damage. Like I need any more of that. Okay, and that was with a helmet. Supposedly creepers deal zero damage when you're holding a shield out. Oh gosh. <laughs> Wait, it's true. What? And here you are thinking creepers are the biggest, baddest mob in Minecraft. As long as you have your shield out, creepers literally do no damage. That's crazy! If you splash an invisibility potion on a shulker box, it shows what he actually looks like. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my gosh, that's so weird! We took his shell away! Dolphins will play with your items. Let's see. Come on, dolphin! Oh! What? That is so cool! Look at me spitting the diamonds back up! 
You can get way more music discs from Creepers if you trick a skeleton into shooting a TNT block. Okay, now we just trick the skeleton into shooting the TNT. All right, then there's a skeleton. Oh, let's see. Oh my, wait, there is so many music discs. What? Oh my god, you can literally get every music disc in Minecraft like this. Confirmed. Fishing rods can light TNT on fire? You just have to throw it through lava? No. Can a natural end portal spawn with 12 eyes of ender already inside of it? Yes, but these are the chances. So most likely it will never happen to you unless you're drinking. So if you pick up a totem of undying, as you die, you survive. So we're gonna throw the totem of undying down. All right, we gotta wait. We get the, the totem's gotta go all the way down. Then we jump. No shot, this works. This is mind blowing. Okay, you can jump two blocks without any effects. You just have to use damage and timing. It's kind of weird, but I swear this is possible. <gasps> I would say this one is like medium rare, but not that rare. If you crouch as soon as you hit the ground, you take no fall damage. I'm calling BS on this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. No shots. Wouldn't this, okay, if this actually worked, I feel like this would be used so much. Oh, I'm gonna try to get this one. We're gonna be here for hours. Oh, I'm done. No, I'm done. That one's fake. I mean, we just probably died a hundred different times there and it didn't work. You can make text on signs glow. Because they released the glow squid, thanks dream. I also voted for the glow squid. Uh, but that's beside the point. There was a time when Minecraft was going to add a couple of different mobs and the glow squid won and he drops a glow ink sack. So what you do, you can literally write whatever you want. I'm obviously not gonna write anything that's self-promotional. Anyways, now all you have to do is once you have the text that you like, you just right click it with the glowing sack and boom, it looks so much better. And you even get an advancement, glow and behold. Water will stop skulk veins from spreading. Anything you kill next to the skulk does this. You even get an advancement saying it spreads. But the myth is that you can use water to stop it. So I'm gonna place water all around these skulk veins. Will it contain the skulk vein spread? Oh my god. It doesn't contain the spread? What are we gonna do? What do we do? There's an infection and it's going to destroy everything. Do not come out! A Lays can't take damage if they're holding something. All right, and I'm assuming it's gonna die. <laughs> wow, big shocker. All right, we're, now we're gonna give this one a diamond and then see if it takes any damage. Oh, okay, don't move. Stay right there. You need to take damage. What? All right, now I've given this one TNT just to double check. All right, now you can't move. No, no, no. Stop flying and flopping, dude. All right, there's no way you're surviving that. This one's got to be dead. You got to be kidding me. So it doesn't even matter what item they're holding. They can just survive anything. Very rare, but it's not beating the totem of a dying for me. So if a cat spawns inside a witch hut, it will always be a black cat. All right, so as you see, we have the hut. All right, I'm going to make a nice slight incision from the top over here. So as you can see... Wait, that's on the roof. We're not even in, so... Oh, that's so weird. No. No, even baby black cats. So the witch's hut is so powerful that it even works in a one block radius around it. But as soon as you go two blocks away, you're getting all sorts of different cats. And it has to be the hut. So if we take the witch and we're gonna put the witch in this tree, it spawns regular cats around the witch, no black cats. We're gonna kill the witch inside the hut and then we're gonna spawn the cats. Are they still black cats? They're still black? You can summon any structure in Minecraft using a command. And the command is slash place structure. Whoa, whoa. Okay, well you can place a taiga village. Let's see. How does it know where to place it? I think it just uses you as like a center point. There's even villagers. What? And the chests are full as well. To really test this, we gotta play something different. Beached shipwreck. Oh, wow, that's so it does. I mean, it's a little glitchy because it doesn't really know exactly where to place it. Oh my, just placed a mansion. This is pretty good. And the best thing about this is it's not just the structure. It's everything that would also be inside of the structure. Even the chests have everything inside of them. Pretty rare, but still not rare enough to defeat our totem of undying myth. You can run underwater only on mud. So here we have dirt. When we try to run, here's what happens. <laughs> we just start swimming. But now we have mud. Now here's the interesting thing. This worked in a previous version and here's us doing it, but will it work? in the newest version 1192. Oh, uh, this is a big moment right now. <gasps> no, they fixed it. Mojang can't keep getting away with this. He can't keep getting away with it.
Thanks, Mojang. There's a myth that you can make an infinite source of lava. This is gonna be my helper today to test and see if the lava is real or not. So here's the resources that you need to try this myth. You need a cauldron to collect the lava. And then on top of it, you just need blocks. All right, dripstone goes beneath. And then all you have to do is build something that can hold the lava and bam, lava goes down in the center and it should throw. Oh, we have our first little drip. You can even hear the drip sound effects. So if it takes away from this, it's not truly infinite because it's just taking it from one place and putting it into another. I would say though, if this works, it is way more rare than the Totem of Undying. So obviously, it takes a while. This is a controversial one because there is legend that there is a red Enderman. And the way to get him to come out of the nether, you make the corners of your nether portal with nether rack. I'm calling straight cap on this one. But then what you do inside of the overworld is you set your day to night, and then you get a campfire of each color, put them in front, and then you wait. He sets a bunch! Got you! If you got scared, you have to subscribe. Was that a mean way to uh, ask you to subscribe to the channel? Yes. While this one is dripping, we actually can bust another dripstone myth side by side, so you know that this is legit or not. The myth is that you can turn mud into water. Not as impressive as Jesus turning water into wine, but still impressive nonetheless. We are going to put mud right here. Oh, actually, we want to put this one a little bit higher. I'm gonna, whoa, what the heck is that? I'm gonna build over here. So obviously the mud has water in it, but if you put the dripstone beneath it, it's supposed to drip all of the water out of the mud and turn it into a regular clay block. Kind of like if you put a sponge into a furnace. Look, bloop. Ancient debris is just condensed warped logs left from Minecraft since 2011. I mean, when you think about them, okay, we're gonna look at these side by side. They do look very similar because of the fact ancient debris has this spiral top it looks almost identical to the warped stem almost not quite but doesn't it like oh i don't know man now that i'm looking at these side by side i feel like this could be true this is more of a conspiracy theory myth we still don't have any lava yet but our lava up here has not dissipated that's a good sign oh oh, oh. Whoa, did you see that though? There was like six drops that came out of the dripstone all simultaneously. We got nothing else better to do. Might as well eat some lunch. Epic. <sighs> Amazing. I felt bad for a second, but I realized this burrito has chicken in it. It does not have beef. So cow, you're fine. Ow. Any day now, that'd be fantastic. Oh, oh, it happened. No way. Dude, I literally have so, look at the sauce on my hands. I, can, I can't even use my mouse hand. Hold on. I'm doing this with one hand. Now the big question is, did it take the lava source block? That's what I want to know. Oh, <laughs> no way. So you can genuinely get an infinite lava source these days. We still have to wait for this mud block to turn into clay. Oh, we suck, dude. Okay, we technically did this myth incorrectly. I feel really dumb right now. So you technically need a stone buffering for whatever reason it buffer i don't know how this works but apparently the only way to test this myth correctly is to do it this way mud stone dripstone this is a spicy myth the myth is that villagers are just ravagers that have been scientifically mutated and have had tests ran on them because if you look at the face of a villager it isn't that far off from the ravager I mean, look at these guys side by side. I don't know, and then if you spawn a pillager, like, look at this. They don't have the same eyebrows. Look at that. They don't have a unibrow. That unibrow is what unifies the fact that Ravagers are villagers. I'm actually convinced about this one without cap that later in Minecraft, they're gonna reveal that Ravagers are villagers. If you mine every single obsidian pillar in the end, you get a secret achievement. And here we go. <laughs> Did not mean to do that. Oh, you gotta get the bottoms too. Oh my, oh wow, what? I didn't realize that these have like the roots of the pillars go this deep. This is just gonna make it that much longer for me to break every single one of them. One, two, three, four, and uh, five, six, and this is the last one, okay? Oh my God, how deep is it? Why is it so deep? Joe, come help me break it manually. We're gonna, I'm, I'm calling in backup. This myth cannot be busted alone. I'm going. I gotta be careful just not to break the last block. Cause here it is, the last block, three. Two, one. <laughs> that's fine, I think that's perfect. You get it? <laughs> when a village has a well inside of it, there's a one in a million chance that there's a button on it and it opens a secret room underneath the well. Um, I'll tell you this, I've been playing Minecraft for way too long and I've never seen a button on anywhere in the well. It just doesn't exist. Has this always been here? I'm gonna click it. I'm pretty sure this is just a planted button because I didn't hear anything trigger when I activated it, but I'll swim to the bottom of the well. What is that? What is it? What's in here? There's a lectern here? 
Villager's manual. Do not ever give a good deal. Don't speak in front of humans. Only huh. Emeralds is life, understandably. Make sure to subscribe or we will steal all your emeralds. I promise you I didn't do this. This was the production team. Okay, if you're angry with me right now, you should get mad at them. Frogs can eat slimes. I've really never ran into a lot of frogs in Minecraft. They're kind of gross looking, but apparently they'll eat the slime. No. Why would, why would you eat the slime? I mean, okay, so if they'll eat a slime, will they eat a magma cube? There's no shot. Oh, there's also a myth too that frogs can poop out lights. Is that a light? Wait, did he just eat the magma cube and give me a light source? A pearlescent? The, okay, I gotta make sure this isn't fake. Did that really just happen? Where you go? Frog, don't leave. Oh, look at him walk out. He just poops out a light and thinks that this guy owns the entire world, huh? So does he do it with any other hostile mobs? All right, here's a skeleton. What do you think? No interest, huh? I still don't think it can beat the infinite lava source. Tadpoles will grow into different colored frogs depending on which biome they grow up in. Snow, desert, warm. Wither skeletons can spawn with any item in their hand, including a bow. I've genuinely never seen a wither skeleton without anything except for a stone sword, but there is a very tiny chance that they can spawn with a bow or other types of weapons in their hand. That is false, but in previous versions of Minecraft, you could push a skeleton through a nether portal and it would turn into a wither with a bow. But you can still spawn them with a command block and they are terrifying. If I go into game mode survival, I'm way less scared. Uh, you look at this guy, he's a flame bow. I, I, terrifying. In the newest version of my cats can survive max fall damage. The height limit in the newest version of Minecraft is 319 blocks. I am going to spawn the cats right here and I'm going to push it off. As you all know on the channel, okay, I don't like cats, all right? Cats are always supposed to land on all four legs and not supposed to die. I'm going to follow this cat. Oh God, where did it go? Wow! Now I know why there's so many furries at conventions. The jungle villagers are hiding the Krabby Patty formula inside of their temples. Don't try to run away from me. I know you've got the formula only. See, sometimes you try to make things peaceful and they just don't want it to be that way. There it is. The temple with the secret formioli. Get out of my way, villagers. Lights on. Ah, much better. Okay, come on, really? This is all you have protecting the secret formula? Oh, I'm gonna read you so good. What was that? Is that TNT? There's a secret biome in Minecraft, the upside down from Stranger Things. And this is it. Now it might look normal, but look at the particle effects that are surrounding this place. And most of these village houses are upside down. Once you enter the village, look at the purple. Even the water's upside down. Oh, this is weird. Ooh, I don't like the sounds. I don't like the sounds. Okay, get me out of here. You can breed frogs with slime balls, which would make sense because technically they eat slimes. No. You guys are literally slime balls. Look, I can't see what's beneath the frogs, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know which one's which. Oh, are those the tadpoles? Don't walk on the eggs. You're gonna break. The warden is just a mutated iron golem who was fed a notch apple trying to heal him. They definitely have similar body shape and the warden doesn't even have any more eyes. There is a secret trapdoor underneath Snow Village igloos. You know, I mean, this place is pretty small and I don't see anything inside of here unless, wait a second. No, surely not. Surely this, no. Okay, I'm opening it, three. Two. Alays will bring their items to the note block instead of you if the note block is activated for 10 or more seconds. Uh, as you can see, the Alay just betrayed my trust entirely and brought his items to the note block instead of me. If you eat 37 carrots in one minute, you gain permanent night vision. You know, I could see this working. They do say that carrots are very, very good for your health. Why would you get permanent night vision for eating 37 carrots? I feel like this would already have been shown at some point in time that Ermojang would have patched it. But I'll eat the 37 carrots, okay? I know you guys want to see it. That's right, I'm, I mean, I'm smunching. We're almost through. And busted. What did I tell you? Nothing happened. I've been dying to bust this myth because you can save yourself from drowning by sleeping in a bed. Oh no, I'm drowning. Oh, but I have a bed? Boom! Oxygen! How sick is that? And then you just swim away. Like nothing ever happened. The fact that a bed can save your life from drowning, that's number one now, okay? If you shoot your bow and arrow beneath a cauldron filled with lava, it will turn your normal arrows into fire arrows. 
Meaning, if there are mobs on the other side, you can actually set them on fire. So like there, you see his toes. Okay, don't put this on wiki feet. Don't be weird. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, why does it work by going underneath? That doesn't make any sense. That's so weird. I mean, I don't know a bunch of like circumstances where this would be actually useful, but it does work. Rain will melt snowmen, basically killing them. Joe, do the rain dance. I know you Britons know how to do it. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we're seeing some movements. I'm still waiting for the rain, Joe. Oh my. Joe, stop the rain dance. Stop the rain dance. <laughs> What have we done? What have we done? You did this. You're complicit in the murder of six snowmen. You can make an overpowered wither skeleton farm with charged creepers. As we all know, if a mob dies to a charged creeper, their head always drops. So with this, we spawn in the withers. And with this, we spawn in the supercharged creeper. And then when it explodes <laughs> and you're too close, you die. But if we teleport back, look at what we're left with. Oh, Look at 24 heads. With this, you could farm withers all day, every day. You can mine reinforced deep slate if your pickaxe has efficiency 255. Oh, there's a crack. But the real question is, does it actually drop the block? Yo. Yes. No, it doesn't drop. What's the point? If you kill a goat with looting 255, they drop a secret goat horn. Sorry, goat, but this is for science. Yeah. All right, dude. I have been told that this makes probably the best sound that anybody has ever heard. And this is coming from an audiophile. Those are people that really like sounds and purchase those expensive headphones called Apple AirPods Max or whatever you know what I'm talking about. Be ready to witness the greatest sound in three, two, one. <laughs> If you die in a hardcore world, your pets die with you. As you can see, cat has collar. Now I just need to die. Iron Golem, please do me the favor. Oh. Oh, where'd my cat go? It's still there. It's got the collar around its neck. It's gonna be there. It's frozen forever. Ah, it's fine. It's a cat. You can always find diamonds if you go to the center of a clay deposit and go seven blocks out. Now the seventh one, you dig straight down. If I find diamonds, I'm gonna scream like a little girl. Oh, 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 wait, there was. I dug a little bit further and there actually is a vein of diamonds. I think that's confirmed. You can jump two blocks with fire damage. Come on. How do we do this? <gasps> oh, <laughs> that's got me fired up. I will extinguish this myth. If you throw a trident with loyalty and a full inventory, it will chase you forever. So my inventory is completely full right now. I want to see where's the trident at. There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh my gosh. It's literally forking me. Oh, please leave a like on this video so this stops happening. Using in rods, you can create a one-way wall to protect you from mobs. So we got all these zombies out here, right? But you can go inside of the in rods, but not even the baby zombies can for whatever reason. Oh, but they can push each other through. Oh, that's bad. Can they get out? What's they're in there. Look at them. They're stuck. Oh, and you can push them back out. Look at this. Get them out. Get them out. Get them out. And look, he can't make his way back in. That is incredible. You can't blow up nether stars. We're going to put a nether star on one side, and then we're going to put the diamond on the other side. And we're going to see which one survives. There's just no chance of this working, right? Ah! Oh, man. I was going to say this was the star of the myth, but that's too cringe. <laughs> this creeper's angry. Surely the creeper can blow up the nether star. Ah! No. Okay, I'm going to put the nether star in a frame. Surely that's going to blow up. That can't last. <gasps> we found a way to break it. That was star pack. You can sleep under lava in a bed and you don't take damage. <gasps> Excuse me? How am I just now finding out about this? This is not fake lava. That is real lava. As you can see, I'm burning. Iron golems can't take fall damage. Or can they? All right, iron golem. Let's see what you got going on here. Come on. And there he goes. Really? Do they not take fall damage because their bodies are so hard made of iron? Or are they just built different? I mean, will I take fall damage if I fall? Surely I will. Yep. Yep, of course. If red mushrooms are hit with lightning, they turn into brown mushrooms. No shot. Yeah, I knew that was bogus. That's stupid. Okay, well, what about if you have a supercharged creeper? Creeper is now supercharged. He's gonna explode. Will he blow up the nether star? No, it still doesn't blow up. I don't understand. You can make a hidden ladder with item frames. And we even have a live audience for this man. In order to do this, you need a map. You need vines, you need an item frame. Item frames, put the maps over them. Vines, you, you look at this. Pew, pew. And watch this. <laughs> oh, look at this. I'm so very secret. Using a sword in your offhand with looting still works. So typically with looting, you would use it like this, right? But I'm going to have it in my offhand and see if the looting still works. Ah! I don't think that worked. I only got one pork chop. Because look, if I use my ah! netherite sword, I got 
three pork chops. <clears throat> so with looting, three feathers. Okay, looting in the offhand. <laughs> Ah, I, I think this Every cat that you spawn in a witch's hut will always be black. I'm gonna summon a cat. That one, I don't know if they're necessarily black. They're kind of, they're kind of purple. Yeah, they're, oh my, yo. So if I stand out here, will they be a different color? <laughs> <gasps> oh, that is weird. You can die signs. This sign is daring me to die it. If you could die signs, I would have done this so much longer ago. <laughs> oh, no. no, dude. No, 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 no. I would have known about this. How am I just now figuring this out? Placing a wet sponge in the nether dries it out. So you don't get the water back. If you use a lava bucket and a furnace with a wet sponge, you actually get the water back into the bucket. Wait, and then also, does this work in the nether? I've never tried this. <laughs> if you stared an enderman dead in the eyes, he won't attack you. I do not believe this. I am looking right into his soul. I think it's working. So your crosshair has to be like perfectly in the middle of his eyes. That's how you gotta do it, man. You gotta assert your primal dominance and just stare at him in the eyes and then he won't attack you. But if you look away, look at this. Oh, no, no, no. That is so weird. You know, I think Endermen are just misunderstood. Or not. <laughs> In portals can break bedrock. Ah, dude, if this works, I'm gonna be quite surprised. I mean, it would kind of make sense. Three, two, one. Oh, the portal's backwards. <gasps> oh, that's actually not the only way to break bedrock, but that was sick. It's not, it's, dude. Okay, I don't know why I can't do this. This is going a lot farther, though, I feel like. If you go back to our one of our Minecraft in this video, we did a five block jump, which is 17 pixel perfect jumps in a row. 17 pixel perfect jumps in a row. You a five block jump. Can't make a two block jump with fire. I'm gonna try again. <gasps> oh, I did. I twice. You take no fall damage if you disconnect and reconnect in midair. I'm gonna try this, and we're logging back in. I think we're still gonna die to be honest, but we'll see. Ah! Why doesn't? Everybody do this. Dude, if you have a hardcore Minecraft world and this happens to you, this could be game changing. If you search excited ZE in the crafting table, it's supposed to change your language to pirate. Uh, Ayo? Reve <laughs> Revealing smashable treasures. Look at this. Crafted loot bag. Farming stick of rock. Can blazes start a campfire? All right, come on, blaze. Come on, blaze it up, baby. Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. I mean, not that you would ever really want to do this, but it does work. This blaze has terrible aim. Making an ender portal through the end portal creates a new dimension. I, this one's like hard to explain, but I think you guys understand where I'm coming from. I mean, this could work, right? It's it, There's a low chance this, this works, but if it works, it's going to be amazing. All right, put the eyes in. Oh, dude, what kind of witchcraft is this? This is supposed to make a new dimension. <laughs> you can track the wither in the end by spawning him sideways. So this is weird. Is he actually going to spawn? Oh, he did spawn. Look at his tail. Oh my gosh, look at this. He's trapped inside of the portal. Look at this. He's taking damage from being stuck inside of the bedrock. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Now the question is, do I take damage from him? We do not take damage. This is the best way to defeat a wither. Using only fences, you can make a one-way animal farm. So instead of connecting the fences, you just do this. It's like you can just walk in and out, right? And look, if you spawn cows and we try to lure them out with the weeds, it works. Like they, they can't escape, but you can get in. Ooh, but does it work with pigs? Pigs are a little bit smaller. It does in fact work with pigs. All right, but chickens though. Chickens are smaller than both of these. And wait, is it working? Oh my gosh. Oh, I think the chicken, wait, I think the chicken got pushed out by the cow. Yeah, so it actually, Work. So the chickens can kind of escape if they get pushed out by the other mobs, but this works. You can sprint while crouching. If you're sneaking, this is as fast as you can go. But it might work if you use trap doors. So, oh my god. What? Oh, that is so weird. How are we this fast? Oh, that is insanity. Why does that work? You can use drip leaves to make a secret entrance in Minecraft. When you step on drip leaves, they fall down. So it's kind of like a trap door. And if you wait, it should make you go, yes, just like this. And then you can enter your secret base. And then you can also have a secret painting in your secret base with a smiley face and diamonds. <laughs> you can use powdered snow to tower infinitely. Oh, this is amazing. At first I was like, how do you do this? But you can just keep taking as long as you have two buckets at the beginning. How has Dream not used this for his manhunts yet? This is, this is manhunt material, ladies and gentlemen. Giving a creeper a full stack of TNT makes it friendly. Right now he is uh, not very friendly. So take this stack. Take the stack of TNT, my guy. Come on. Ah! Okay, or we can just explode in anger. That's great too. No, 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 wait, hold on. Relax, dude, relax. No, 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 no. Yes, stay right there, stay right there. Take the TNT, think about it. Okay, all right, okay. 
Whoever came up with that one is pretty dumb. If you ever tried it with channeling, you can make infinite lightning. So we've got this contraption set up. This is the only way this could be possible. Type in weather. It's raining now. And, oh, <laughs> And it works. I mean, we had to die to make it work, but you can literally make infinite lightning and thunder. That's pretty, that's, that's cool. Does Minecraft listen to you? You might think that Herobrine and the other monsters can hear you, but have you ever wondered if Minecraft itself is listening to you? Minecraft, it'd be really nice if I could find some diamonds right now. As you can see, Minecraft definitely does not. That was strange. What? A little bit creepy that we managed to find it as we mentioned the myth. And now that we have some diamonds, it'd be sure nice if we could find a a village. What the heck? We're gonna put this myth to rest once and for all. Minecraft, it'd be fantastic if you rained emeralds on this village. No. That's what I thought. Unless it only answers things that are reasonable. What if we wish for this villager to give us a trade for a diamond axe? Come on. Okay, maybe a diamond axe is unreasonable, but I am low on food. What? No freaking way. Is Minecraft listening to me or am I being watched? I'm watching you. Is there going to be a war between the Overworld and Nether in the next Minecraft update? You're going to need some backstory on this one, so buckle up. Get some popcorn, it's story time. Long ago, Pikmin in Minecraft actually ruled the Overworld. But they destroyed villages, every single peaceful mob. They literally wreaked havoc on the Overworld. Villagers were sick and tired of the Pikmin taking their baby villagers captive. So what did they do? They started building millions of iron golems. The golems were stronger than the pigmen, obviously, and so what they ended up doing is beating them back into the nether, locking them away after a thousand year war. And that realm that they were banished to is now known as the nether. Insane, right? Now you see why the overworld in Minecraft is in such danger. Pigmen in the nether are building bastions. They're storing up loot, weapons, you name it. Zombie pigmen have even mutated into stronger pigmen known as piglins. They have been acquiring so much gold in their trade, so that way they can buy enough weapons to take back over the overworld. And in the next update of Minecraft, not only are they going to take revenge on the Iron Golems, but I think they're going to try to take over the entire overworld once again. Our villagers just pretending to be dumb, and they're actually brilliant. I'm talking Einstein, Bill Nye level IQ here. Okay, listen. Villagers have to be hiding something. They open doors and walk around corners for literally no reason. Could they have a secretly much higher intellect than we had originally thought? Their heads are so freaking big, I'm telling you, they're hiding their massive brains in there. Why do zombies like going for villagers? Because zombies love eating brains. You starting to see what I'm saying here? And I mean, are we to expect that they put an entire village society together when they seemingly can't even exit a boat by themselves? Unless they are pretending. Maybe they have a deep, dark plan and it's absolutely evil. Is Minecraft the post-apocalyptic survival tutorial or is it a video game? At first, Minecraft seemed like a fun kids game. Now everybody plays Minecraft, okay? Even people who said they would never play the game, including celebrities and even politicians. Here are the facts about Minecraft. You spawn alone in a massive world where you have to learn how to fend for yourself. You have to make friends with villagers and certain mobs, negotiate with your enemies, piglins, and even make tools to survive. Is Minecraft subtly teaching its players real life survival skills? For example, did you know what Obsidian was before you played the game of Minecraft? If so, like the video. What if Notch made this entire game just so its players could survive the apocalypse? And the reason he sold it to Microsoft for billions of dollars is because people have already learned everything they need to know on how to survive an apocalypse. And almost everybody who started playing the game 11 years ago is grown up now. And now that they're all grown up, does that mean they're ready for what's to come in the future? And the real question is, have you played enough Minecraft to even know if you're ready for the apocalypse? Does Netherrack have an evil origin? Have you ever wondered what is Netherrack? Or more importantly, what it could be made from? The block seems to be made from a red, fleshy-like substance that makes a weird, fleshy noise when you break it. Listen very closely and break a ton of them with Efficiency 5. It makes you feel slightly uncomfortable. And because I felt so uncomfortable, I decided to research this block. I dug so deeply, I looked at the oldest code from the oldest versions of Minecraft, and in fact, Netherrack was actually the Bloodstone. But why would it be called Bloodstone? And then I remembered. Do you recall the Thousand Year War between the Iron Golems and Zombie Pigmen I just mentioned earlier? Well, most of that war actually happened in the Nether, not in the Overworld. What if the Nether was originally a gorgeous and vibrant place full of beauty? 
only to be demented by the battleground of blood from the zombie pigmen and iron golems who fought and died in the nether. Netherrack is just cobblestone that has soaked up the blood of millions of zombie pigmen and iron golems. And what if they're still alive and crying out from the netherrack blocks and that's the sound it makes every time you mine it. If I talk about this anymore, I'm gonna be uncomfortable. Wandering traders are just banished villagers. This myth states specifically that wandering traders are actually just villagers banished to roam the overworld at night. If you think this is a bit of a stretch, hear me out for a moment, all right? Every night when the sun goes down and the moon comes out, the wandering trader uses an invisibility potion on himself. Why would he do this? Does he not want to be seen? He needs to make trades, right? And another question, why have we never seen a wandering trader at a village? Could it be that they were banished far back in the ancient past of Minecraft? What could they have done that was so vile, so evil, that they still haven't been reinvited to the village culture? What if they unjustly were kicked out? Framed even? Or have they secretly been working with pillagers and that's why they keep going invisible? I'm telling you, this myth goes deep. deep. What if they're leaking information as to where the villagers are? How else would the pillager outposts know exactly where to raid them? Is the Minecraft Dimensions theory actually true? Everything you do in Minecraft actually matters. From breaking a blade of grass to killing an innocent mob, it all matters. All those times you dumped innocent villagers into lava or blew up your friends with TNT had an actual consequence. Just like Santa Claus, Minecraft is collecting every good thing and bad thing you've done in the game and ultimately in the future will punish you accordingly. If you were a good kind of player, like you always defended villagers from raids or never killed mobs unless you needed some food or you subscribe to this channel, <coughs> you go to the end. Or heaven in this theory's case. Heaven in Minecraft has infinite diamonds. Every villager listens to your command, trades you whatever items you want for as little emeralds as you want to pay. You can even forge nations and build any item you dream of. But if you continue to perform evil acts in Minecraft and you had no regret at all for all the peaceful mobs that you killed, you get sent to the nether, which in this case is Minecraft's version of hell. In Minecraft's hell, players are always at half a heart. You're always hungry, but there is never food nearby no matter how long you search for it. And even if you do find some food, it replenishes no hunger. The only thing that's nearby is netherrack and lava in every single direction. And the worst thing about it, it's a never ending loop. So no matter how far you journey, you're always going to end back in the same place you just were. Next time you think about bullying that villager, think about your actions because they have severe consequences. But the most popular theory is actually this. Herobrine is the judge of Minecraft. Similar to a Grim Reaper or Shinigami, if you watch anime. After a player has reached a level where their acts become so heinous and evil, he shows up for that player and they are never seen again in game. But some do say in real life. Think about it, have you ever had a friend who played Minecraft that no longer has contacted you after their evil deeds? And the player gets banned from the server, but in reality, Herobrine actually comes to take them away? Sounds legit. And the more you think about it, the more you start to believe in the Dimension series. How were the Endermen created? They're odd creatures, aren't they? Out of all the Minecraft mobs, none of them stand out quite as mysterious as these creepy creatures. And the deeper you dig, the more mysterious history you find out. It is said that the Endermen were the first civilized people of the Minecraft world. They were an ancient race of builders, and the myth states that they built everything in the whole entire game. And that's the reason they're the only mob in Minecraft that can still pick up blocks. But years after this, the Wither spawn. The Endermen were strong, but they could do nothing to stop his rampage. They were eventually forced to open a portal to a new realm, and this made them move into what we now call the End. And because they only ate chorus fruits in the end, that's how they gained their ability to teleport. But with the blessing of teleportation came a curse. And you might even wonder why the Endermen try to kill you when you look at them. They try to kill you because they just escaped. If the Endermen were the first mobs ever, then they must have been trapped in the end for millions of Minecraft years. They lost their will and importantly their minds from consuming nothing but the chorus fruits. And now that players have been opening the portals to the end since Minecraft release, they slowly were let back into the overworld. This may be speculation, but I think they're jealous of every player in Minecraft because of the freedom we have in the game. And that's why they don't want to kill us. They actually want to eat us, just like Titans in Attack on Titan. So did they lose their minds because they were in the end for millions of years or because the chorus fruit rotted their brains? That's for you to decide. The Ender Dragon enslaved the Endermen. This myth states that when the Endermen were driven to the end, the Ender Dragon enslaved all of them to do its bidding. It's a little crazy at first, but listen to what I found. We can place Ender Crystals. Surely they didn't just spawn there. Someone had to place them, and that means we know Endermen were taken captive by the Dragon. And because the Ender Dragon can't place blocks, but the Endermen can, see what 
where I'm going with this? The Endermen were forced to place the end crystals on top of the obsidian pillars, which then regenerates the Ender Dragon, essentially allowing it to live forever. This makes sense because when you fight the Ender Dragon, he doesn't do anything to the Endermen below him. It would also explain why the Endermen became so evil and dangerous to us Minecraft players. Illagers were just villagers who were banished for their use of black magic. Because of our previous myth, we know that wandering traders are just banished villagers. So why are the Illagers any different? They were banished for much darker reasons. Illagers actually used to be normal Minecraft villagers, but long ago, one day, a normal villager discovered something. He was playing around with his potions and found something incredible. When he used his secret ingredient, in his potions, all of his skin turned gray and he gained super villager strength. He then called this potion the Illager Potion. But soon after he celebrated, he was shut down by the rest of the villagers because they found out his secret ingredient, Iron Golem Brain. The Illager just wanted to improve the lives of the villagers, but after they found out what was inside of the potion, they had no choice. He created hundreds of Illager potions and set off a giant potion bomb in the whole town that would transform and brainwash every single one of them. After this, they named themselves the Illagers and started to raid villagers, taking more victims and growing their army by destroying iron golems and collecting more brains. And they have so much hatred for villagers that they have never stopped. Wither skeletons are born from the souls of fallen mobs. What is soul sand? Have you ever wondered why this block hisses at you and even screams when you try to break it? And if you zoom in closely, why does it look like there are faces inside of the block? Well, this myth states that during the 1000 year war, skeletons that were in the nether beforehand were burnt so bad that they ended up turning into soul sand. The scariest part is that soul sand is still alive. And when you're not looking at soul sand, it's said that a wither skeleton is born and the sand falls apart. And the only reason that the wither skeleton is dark is because it was burnt from long ago. Did gas come from squids? This one's a little bit out there, but as always, that's up for you to decide. If you try to figure out what gas are, you will have a hard time coming up with a good answer. A giant floating jellyfish? No, they must come from something else. Could they have come from a genetically mutated squid? If so, who created them? The ancient builders? The Endermen? And what is their purpose? Are they just guards to the nether fortress? Squids can breathe underwater, but I bet you didn't know that gas can actually breathe under lava. And because I don't believe in coincidences, the squid must be the original gas. What really is the void? Yeah, 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 the area below the bedrock, right? But have you ever wondered what it really is? And why does it kill you? Are we being suffocated because there's no oxygen like the dark realms of space? Or is the player actually freezing because the temperatures are sub-zero? And if we could survive and see in the void, what's actually there? Because even in spectator mode, you're still taking damage when you're in the void. So unfortunately, there's no way to see what's deeper. And because of that, we'll never be able to see what's in the void, right? Well, no, because you can actually venture eight long hours deep into the void using a full inventory of stacked notch apples. But even after eight long hours, players still haven't found the bottom of the void. So does this mean that players haven't ventured far enough or does the void actually not have a bottom? So if it does have a bottom, what's down there? Is it an expanse of nothing or does it just never end?